Welcome back to every time I turn on the camera, I kind of have to poop. <laughs> Welcome back to Rio Tries Things. I'm trying things today. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying things today. So, DecoArt reached out to me in April and asked me if I would do a review on their new... Um, on their new product line, which I think is very brave because I don't use deco art for numerous reasons. However, I decided that I would indeed give it a try because deco art is trying to break into the poor community. Okay. Um, so they sent me this brochure on how to use their stuff. And so we're, we're going to attempt it. We're going to attempt to make all of this work. So they said that they were going to send me paint and supplies. So I kind of got excited thinking, okay, I'm going to get a line of paint. I'm going to mix a bunch of colors. I'm going to show you, try to show you guys how to mix colors with, with this as well. So I got this little box and we already opened it because I needed to know what I was doing here. They sent me a giant bottle of pink. This one is bubble gum. Pink. That, that's Rio's favorite color. They sent me a giant primary yellow. They sent me a giant snow tight in parentheses titanium white. And they sent me a primary red. Now my first thought, because I'm keeping this real. This is they did not pay me for this. They simply asked me to do a review. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. And I am keeping it real. So my first thought is, why would you send me pink when you sent me red and white so those are the only colors i have to work with here that's it and then i got a small container of clear pouring top coat high gloss clear acrylic this is what they're using for varnish okay this is the directions for this create a high-end finish with this one-step pouring top coat dries to a lacquer like high gloss finish ideal for canvases wood panels or other flat surfaces directions do not shake and that's because when you shake the varnish it adds air bubbles in there and then those little tiny microscopic air bubbles show up in your finished product as popped craters you don't want to shake your 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 varnish ever shake shake pour, shake shake your booty pour over dry painted surface tilt surface for even coverage and drain off excess to prevent pooling we smooth out size with a palette knife or a brush and then place it a 45 degree angle and allow to dry overnight avoid distributing surface while top coat is avoid disturbing surface while top coat is drying application temperature above 50 degrees do not freeze water based self leveling non yellowing soap and water cleanup for additional product information visit decoart.com okay um i'm not excited about the 45 degree angle Okay, pouring medium. Create rich, vibrant paint pours with this pouring medium. Thins the paint to ideal consistency, creates cell, cell effects. Well, I'm here to tell you that I, I'm seeing what they've done, okay? I'm not seeing any cells here. And this is why I don't use their product. However, mixed with their, but the, now they've come up with a pouring medium. So maybe this pouring medium mixed in with their product will allow for the cells to form. So. Without further ado, let's just get to this because I'm interested to see how it all turns out. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I got this nice little letter that says, we are super excited to have found your paint pouring art on YouTube and we're even more excited to get some of your, to get some of our new paint pouring medium and clear pouring top coat in your hands to play around a bit. We can't wait to see what you think and we love to hear your honest feedback after we had a chance to experiment. It's pretty exciting because you're officially one of the first to try these products out. See, that's pretty cool, right? I'm gonna follow this exactly to a T. Some pink in one, some yellow in one, red in one. white now the directions say for the fluid art for the fluid two parts paint one part medium okay so let's go ahead and add a little bit more paint to these okay so again one part two parts paint to one part pouring medium 
Okay, so here's the pouring medium. This is what I was sent. Ooh, ooh. Here we go. Smell it. Give it a smell. Has it? <laughs> Don't okay, smell go. it. That was a terrible <laughs> idea. Okay. Okay. All right. A little bit more in the white because there's more white in there. All right. Okay. So there's that. Now let's go back in here and stir this up. Okay, now. I'm going to do this first with no silicone because they have left out any instructions for silicone. So we're just going to see what these colors with no mixing um, are going to accomplish. No silicone in this at all. I've just done their pouring medium in their paint. So here's the white. Here's the pink. Here's a little more white. Here's some red. Here's a little more white. Here's the yellow. Here's some more pink right into that. Here's some red right into that. Here's some more pink. Okay, so. I'm going to flip this over. And we're going to see what the results are that we get. Ooh, torch. I'm not going to heat the cup. I'm not going to do anything like I normally right. do. We're just going to straight up. This is the first attempt at making cells with the new Deco Art pouring medium and their yeah. fluid paints, their fluid acrylics. I'm going to give it a second here. Three, two, seven, one, fourteen, thirty-seven. Nine, sixteen, go. Yeah, okay, my initial thoughts is no. The whole point of the pouring paint is to get the cells, these big beautiful cells that look like you've spent hours and hours and hours with a brush painting. What is happening right now is these cells as I just barely, first of all, I'm getting these tiny little lacy cells. As I pick this up, it's pulling apart. Right here, it's already separating and it's already crepey. Um, and that's because there's no, a lot of this, I don't know, I don't know why it is. But this right here, see it's already pulling apart. So this without silicone is probably not gonna work. Unless this is the look you're going for, but this is not the look I am going for. And this paint feels, it, it's like, it's almost like um, some of it is getting like a, a cheesy texture to it. Like it's um, like milk that's been, that's set up. You know what I mean? I don't know what the word is for I that. Like cheese. You like cheese? But see how it's pulling? I'm gonna turn this around and see how this whole section right here is just pulling itself away? Mm -hmm. That's not what we're looking for here in the poor world. Oh, it's, it's seriously indenting. It's probably because I torched it. Um, okay. Oh yeah, you can't manipulate this paint at all because it just it just mixes right on up. Um, I don't know what this is. It started out to be something that was going to be cool. Obviously, can't take the heat when you torch it. It's it just can't take the heat. Do not um, El Hito. So 
There's the first one, and I'm giving it a big fat no, and I'll tell you why. It's chalky. I don't, I don't think using fluid acrylic with pouring medium is the way to make this happen. I think that, that we should test out their heavy bodied acrylics with the pouring medium to see if we get a different consistency because these are so chalky and you can't do anything with it. It's already setting up and it's, 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 it's not doing what I want it to do. This is not, this does not impress me. So let's cut for a minute and come back and let's try this with silicone in it and see if we get different results. This is number one with no silicone and it curdled as I heated it up. Okay, so ready? Okay, treadmill oil. This is my go-to. I'm going to, this, this paint has already been mixed. You saw me mix it. There's t plenty left over to do this canvas, so I'm not gonna mix any more. So I'm gonna do one drop of treadmill oil in each one of these cups, except for the white. I'm gonna leave the white alone. So, and keep in mind that she has not mixed these colors. These are all straight out of the tube. These are all tube. straight out of the tube. I'm not gonna mix the colors and try to come up with different combinations because it's just, it is what it is. We just wanna test um, how we make cells with this paint. Oh yeah, look at that stirring action. Let me clean that off. I'm actually probably gonna make a little bit more of the pink. I'm gonna make right now I'm gonna add just a touch. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna alter anything. I'm not gonna alter anything. We're just gonna go straight for this. Okay, so here we go again. White, pink. The paint is the right, con you know, it's the consistency of honey, so it's correct. But it feels a little chalky to me and like it's already kind of lumping up in the cup. Lumping up. Now the yellow. Now the red. I'm gonna wipe off my stick. I'm gonna finish this cup off with the white. All right, silicone, no silicone, silicone. Exact same paint, just a little bit of silicone in there. Let's flip that over, give it a minute. <sighs> comment in the, leave, leave us a comment below and tell me what you think right now if you think we're gonna get better cells, cells with the silicone in there than we did with no silicone. Because the no silicone didn't work out for me. And it didn't stand up to the torch. <laughs> Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous, Sace. What do you think? Do you think it's gonna work? Shall we do a countdown? Seven, 12, 19, 106. I wish I could breathe through my nose. That would be great. Allergy season, say. Oh, Allergies. God. I feel so gross. Oh, okay. We've got a little more action. Look at that. We've got that, a little oh, more action. Nice, I like red. Yep. I need all this paint out of this cup, so. Okay, so we've got a little more action. Let's add heat. Mm, we're getting some cells. Not 
then let's see what happens when we start to move this stuff around. Okay, they may have redeemed themselves. You guys are... Okay, these cells are, are maintaining their shape a little better. These over here are starting to pull apart. <clears throat> I'm just going around doing what I normally do on every one of my pores and trying to move that paint around a little bit without killing all the cells. So for those of you wondering, treadmill oil is the wonder, wonder treatment in all of this. Can we call it the wonder child? And I'll tell you that these guys developing a pouring medium specifically for this paint has done wonders for this paint because I could not get this to do... These cells are still on the weak side, however, Think that I think that they have redeemed themselves because I've used the uh, with the with the treadmill oil. I think that this painting is actually going to be okay. I'm going to go in here and grab some of this because I'm really I'm really short on paint on this one. My cup wasn't quite full. Oh, that's a really pretty cell right there. Let's see if we can get that in there. Swiping's not really an option with this. It just makes mud. I just swiped over there and it should not have, with other brands of paint, I would not have gotten mud and this one I just straight up got You're mud. You're dripping into your other painting? Oh, I am? No. You were getting ready to. Oh, okay. So, let me move this down just a little bit more. Okay, so there's phase one of this initial test. Okay, so I don't want to torch it anymore because I, it curdled over here with no silicone and this, I pushed the, the, my luck as much as I could. So, we're gonna have to come back and we'll show you the dry process and then we'll show you the varnishing. And we're back. Okay, so these are all dried. These two have dried. Now, I'm going to give you my honest opinion about both of these so far. This one sucks. This is the Americana acrylic paint here, you know, that we have been gifted, which was cool. I appreciate it. But it's crepey. It pulls apart. It does not form con um, cells that are, con content. you know, they're just not cohesive is what it is. And... The paint got a little, the paint is milky and chalky, which I cannot stand. It is not vibrant colors, which is another thing that irritates me, which is why you can't mix these these um, colors very well. But the other thing is, is that it, it kind of, um, it, it curdled on me for this, okay? Now, the same exact paint with the same exact pouring medium with me using my silicone produced these results here. Now, I will tell you that this is a much better specimen, that's a fact, but the colors are not vibrant like I like, and the cell formation is still kind, it's still really weird, the colors just aren't, this is not what I would use to produce a piece of art that I was going to sell to someone, so far, so, and I'm just giving you an honest opinion here. So, this one has better cell formation, my opinion of this one is that it has better cell formation because I added my treadmill oil, which is not something they tell you to do in the brochure. Um, and I was able to heat it, but it's still milky and cloudy. So the next step is the clear pouring top coat that they have sent me. This is a brand new product by DecoArt, and they've asked me to test it out for them. Okay, and I'm just giving you guys an honest opinion. Testing in progress. So what I'm supposed to do here, the directions say, do not... Um, 
Can we shake do it up? Do not, no, do not shake it up because Can that causes stirring. bubbles. No, no stirring. You're not going to stir it. You're not going to shake it. It causes bubbles. Can I put dirt in it? So what it wants me to do is pour a whole container. Pour a dry paint, tilt, and drain off the excess to prevent pooling. Smooth out the sides with a palette knife or a brush, and then um, tip at a 45 degree angle. Now I got to tell you, I am, I am, I have never, I need a pair of gloves, Ace. I have never tipped a canvas that I have varnished at a 45 degree angle. Because if it, if the drying time is slower in some areas and faster than others, to me it sounds like it would ripple. But we're going to do it on this one right here that I'm already not a fan of. We're going to tip it at a 45 degree angle. And this one we're going to dry flat just to see what's going on. Because um, I'm, I'm curious. So... I'm also curious to test the heavy body deco art line against. Oh, that is. Let's do this. So I'm just going to pour a fairly decent amount of pouring of top coat on that. You're doing a great job. And then I'm going to. Is that the right thing? Okay. I'll tell you right now. Do you want to. Thing to move that around with? No, it doesn't want you to move it around because you're going to get air bubbles in it. Fair enough. I think you might need to pour some more on there. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's thick like glue. And um, I'm already having to use quite a bit more than what I thought I was going to have to use for coverage. I'm trying to get it to cover this here, this edge right here. And I'm going to just touch it because I'm getting impatient. Um, to be honest, the varnish is, or the top coat is thicker than um, what I would even let my paint be trying to pour paint off up here. So, um, and I, I don't know if See, the reason why they don't want you to touch it is because where you, any place that you have touched it, it leaves craters. It leaves, yep, it leaves a crater. So, and that, that now has a bubble in it. I've gotten the excess off of there, and that wants me to tip this at a 45 degree angle, which is about like that. Now, I am going to do the same thing. To this next canvas. These canvases are eight by ten, y'all. Just for the record, they're eight by tens, and these are eight fluid ounces of top coat and eight fluid ounces of pouring medium. And I will tell you that it, I've done two canvases, and I've used a third of the pouring medium, and I'm probably going to use half of this. So, um, because we don't want bubbles. I am at, I'm at, I've used three quarters of a jar of top coat on two 8x10 canvases. So, um, you know, if you were going to get ready for a show and use this method to do so, it, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how, if it's going to be cost prohibited to, to attempt to do it this way. And I don't like all this dripping on the bottom of my canvas either. 
for the varnish. I think it cheapens it, but um, let's see if that goes away. They said that I could run a palette knife along the edge of that, and that's kind of what I'm thinking, but it just seems like there's too much on here. Trying to get that edge filled. Not getting any younger. Does it say to let dry at a 45 degree angle? Yeah. Overnight. Let dry overnight at a 45 degree angle. Okay, so now I have varnish all over the back of my canvas, which I typically would not allow to have happen. Now I can tell you, and I don't know if this is a glossy or um, a matte finish yet, but I can tell you that pouring it on is not how I would do this. I would not pour it on. I would not, it wastes too much. So yeah, I've used over a half a bottle of top coat on these two things here. So I guess, so we're gonna cut and come back to in the morning and see what this looks like. And we're back. Yes, okay, so we left off with the varnishing or the top coat is what they call it. I am going to tell you that I'm not a fan for a few reasons. One, you have to put so much on here to roll it around that it would pr I would never use it. Two, even though it's cured and it's been the length of time, it's I can still, still indent it yeah. with my fingernail. It's not Three, set up. right here. This reason right here, right here, right here. Now I don't know if you guys can see this, yep. but I am telling the truth. This top coat yellows your paint it dries with a bit of a yellow hue. And so for that reason alone, I am out on this product. Um, this one over here is the one that we poured and didn't tip, and the side edges of it actually look a lot better, but it's gonna be the same thing. It's, it's yellowed, the, the pigment, and I'm, you know, I'm wondering in direct sunlight what this is going to do. So in my professional opinion, and I have, I, I do have some, Keep in mind that we have that up. we have varnished but, you know, thousands and thousands of pieces by ourselves, and we have also ruined hundreds of pieces. Right. My my whole thing is that I used over a half of this jar to do two eight by ten canvases. I don't think it's cost effect effective to do it this way. This one right here again is their pouring medium with their paint and no silicone at all and it curdled when i heated it up so the cell action is not is terrible there's no reason and you can't mix these paints they just make mud which we discovered here as i tried to alter some of the surfaces they're just very chalky i don't like them for my personal preference is no um that is my professional opinion of the products i appreciate the opportunity to do a review i'm sorry that it wasn't a stellar one but that's how i feel about the whole situation so if deco art wants to send me their heavy body paints to do an accurate review of those i'd be happy to do so and test the heavy body paints with floetrol and silicone as well as with their pouring medium and their top coat but um i think that that pretty much sums it all up so until next time thanks for joining us in the studio oh don't forget to tune in sunday because we're releasing we're releasing another video on the channel hopefully around two o'clock in the afternoon we'll see um, so make sure you subscribe so that you get the notification for that. So there you have, there, there, there you have it. There you have it. Okay. <laughs> so there you have it. That's my honest opinion about the product. Until next time, thanks for joining us in the studio. Ciao. Yoga.